welcome everybody back to the Advisor Tech YouTube channel. Glad that you're here. And welcome if this is your first time here. I hope you decide to stick around. Check out some of the other videos on the channel. Today we are finally beginning the reassembly process of the transfer case for the Hunter Series Land Cruiser. So if you haven't checked out the other parts of the series, the teardown and everything, they are quite extensive. I'm going to try to make this video a lot shorter just emphasizing on the critical details of as it's happening. So to start off with here, I didn't have all these parts shown previously. So now that they're all here, let's just take a look at those. I went with the kit here from Cruiser Outfitters, which comprises of that gasket kit from Toyota originally, as well as a handful of other little parts. So rather than just trying to piece together your uh, Bear, your uh, seals, I highly encourage you to check out Cruiser Outfitters or cruisertech.com for all of those parts. Included in that kit is, looks like pretty much every O-ring that would be necessary for every one of the uh, different sensors and switches and so far throughout the case. The Cruiser Outfitters part has the rear output seal, front output seal, transfer case input seal, which is this guy right here, as well as, I believe this is the little shaft shifter selector shaft seal. Once I have all of the main parts back installed, I'll kind of go around and swap out all these uh, bearing, or the, all these O-rings and everything on all the sensors. In addition to those parts, I'm gonna install the rear transmission seal. So that'll be up underneath the truck currently. The transmission is not out right now. That'll take care of that while we're in here. I've got the rear bearing, the rear output bearing for the transfer case and the front output bearing for the transfer case. And that pretty much, oh, and then just a little bit of a Toyota fippage. I'm not sure all of the sealant that I pulled off of here was uh, red, but I don't have a red package of fippage, so the form in place gasket. So uh, we're gonna go with black and uh, I presume it's gonna work just fine. Today I've been spending time getting everything cleaned up and boy, it is a painstaking process. Just like any good paint job, I feel, you know, it's all in the prep work. Well, if you just rip this thing apart, kind of wipe it out and then slap in some new bearings and stuff and seals, well, how good of a job are you really doing? So while I'm at it, I just try to take a painstaking process of cleaning them all up as best as I can. And I've still got to contend with the rear side just yet. I mean, that's how nasty these things are. I'm going to uh, get to installing the front shaft back into the uh, front housing with the bearing and the seal and so forth. So uh, yeah, hopefully this will be a much shorter video and we'll get this thing buttoned up. Uh, as far as cleanup goes, just razor to scrape off all the old sealant, a nice good sturdy wire brush. Okay, and then I like to use just some green scratch bright pads. If I've got red, that's handy too, but if not, and then just blast out some, uh, spray some uh, brake cleaner in each of the bolt holes and blast it out with compressed air. Did a little bit of flossing on these holes with the rag. Um, and then just a little bit of emery cloth to, I try to go a little bit smoother than 120, but if 120 is all you got, that'll work. And then finish it off with some, with the uh, green pads, scotch bright pads, but anytime there's a bearing, not a bearing, a seal surface, you know, you got to re be really mindful of whether or not it has been in there long enough to create a groove on the uh, surface that it seals, because this is only a 20 year old truck, but you know, a lot of us have 30 and 40 year old Land Cruisers and they do make, well, they make speedy sleeves that you can install over those in certain cases, but the point is that if you go to all this trouble to tear it down and put in a new seal, then, uh, you know, if it, if you don't have, if you haven't blended smooth that bearing, that seal writing surface, then you may be in store for another leak. All right, I'm about to take this over to the press. Just one last check to make sure there's not a single grain of sand or anything down inside the bearing seat. Put a dab of oil on it. This here is the front output bearing. The side that has the cover on it goes facing you in this orientation. This 
thing could practically be just tapped in actually. Definitely gonna get that spring in, that uh, C-clip in now, no problem. On to the seal. Perfect. Whew. All right, now as you'll recall from part two of this saga, this bad boy right here had to be pulled off with the puller. There she is, there's the hard work, all that work to get that seal replaced. The seal is in there sitting nice and snug. We got a bearing, a brand new bearing put in there. So that was the, that was the great effort really on this whole project. This is the front one and this is the one that was leaking like mad. The rear one was seeping, but this whole project came out just because of that one seal. So we are definitely on the upslope at this point. caution on that is just to be damn 300% sure that you're going on the right direction. <laughs> just put that thing on, press it on backwards. Well, that would be all sorts of fun, wouldn't it? Ta-da! There we go. That front seal is done. I haven't pulled this collar off before, but uh, yeah, just on inspection, those are those sliding teeth are in really good shape. Just where they engage these ones right here, like brand new, man. Great shape. Quick cleanup of these bad boys. We have lubricated the splines here, made sure that is in the correct orientation with the kind of synchro mesh type gears uh, abutting up against the lower gears, flat flat side of that to the top. And so, in with the snap ring will go. Fully seated, looking real nice. Don't forget, put the seal on before you press the bear the shaft back into the bearing.
bearing race seat. Okay, in we go. You really gotta kinda keep a square eye on pressing activities. Right now, that snap ring is the only thing that this thing's butting up against. Well, that sounded like a bottom out to me. We will find out. Oh yeah. So there we have that. Shaft seated. Sounds real nice, sounds real good. Oh yeah, like a glove, man. Man, we are just about done cooking with you. Whatever this plate's called, got a nice oil port passageway. Medium strength. Tight's gonna go. So here we are, all that effort, just like on the front side, all that effort just to change out that damn seal. And now we've got a new seal in place, new bearing, sounding real smooth, real good. It's just time to get this damn thing put back together. Okay, so a couple of last little things that I would consider critical on the reassembly of this. Uh, real quick, I didn't mention is that there's a little screen right here, like a pickup. I just kind of blasted some brake cleaner inside of there and then used the compressed air to kind of blast that back out. Since you're in here, maybe clean out whatever. I didn't see any kind of metal shavings or anything like that. Probably could just pull those caps off and clean it out, but I do not have any concerns. As you may remember, on the removal, we have the ring and the shim. So. I don't know, shim washer and then a, a thin shim. Okay, that's gonna go right here on this bearing. That is not the correct orientation. This would be the way that it goes, as well as a thick, a thick ring and a thin shim onto this bearing here. Um, and then just making sure that you don't get, don't forget to put this little guy back in. There you go. Sweet. So when I got this thing upside down, hopefully she doesn't fall out. If you're doing this inside the truck, you can use the grease to kind of hold your uh, shims on as well. Just grease each one of them up there individually and stick it back on. Right here to the little bearing, what would you call this, a bushing?
practically pointing right at the shaft. Oil on this shim and this one. Just so we're avoiding metal on metal right out of the gate. Beauty. Right on to the dowels. Boom. Seat it all around. I noticed that there was just a little bit of corrosion on, uh, like rust corrosion on these lower bolts. So I'm going to put Loctite on every one of these. And I'm going to put a little dab of fippage right around the bolt head. Alright, so there you pretty much go, you guys. Uh, we're going to wrap this video up. Um, all that's really left is installing the front seal, which is pretty straightforward. I'm going to pop that bad boy out with the seal removal tool, slap it in there. Then we've got the uh, transmission output seal underneath the truck that we're going to stick in. Must be for that shaft right there. So I've kind of got some work cut out for me along with a number of uh, bushings and o-rings here that are going to go into these different sensors and so forth. So instead of boring you with all that, that's, I mean, we've pretty much talked through all the uh, critical parts of this project. Just as a reminder, this is not an instructional video. I don't do instructional videos. This is a demonstration video of how I managed to get this little project done. And so you should not interpret it as me having any sort of authority or experience on these things. There are plenty of other guys out there that do, and I encourage you to reach out to them for help if you need to. You can ask me the questions if you have them, but uh, you know, there's some, there's some serious experts that have been doing this a long time. You know, changing out a couple bearings and seals in your gearbox should be a pretty reasonable uh, user maintenance type of item, in my opinion, on these old Land Cruisers. So things beyond that, uh, I wouldn't, if, if it involves uh, transmissions with valve bodies, that's just a little bit beyond my scope. Now, I did work in a transmission shop when I was uh, when I was young. My mechanical background and experience, real quick side note, is worked at my dad's shop, which is partly why I'm trying to kind of relight that uh, legacy in our family and get this shop up and running. And so worked in a machine shop, rebuilt some engines, and did a lot of basic mechanical stuff through my high school days, as well as taking some uh, ASC certification courses at the um, Applied Technology Schools here in Utah uh, through high school. Um, and then I did work in a transmission shop, but my job at that point was practically just to remove transmissions and reinstall them, transmissions and transfer cases as well. And then reinstall them, get them buttoned up, and get them sent down the road for the customer. But I never, uh, I only dabbled into the insides of uh, automatic transmissions a couple of times, and it's pretty complex stuff. I mean, it can be done, but it requires a lot of special tools. And uh, so when it comes to getting into the transmissions on these things, I'll, I would probably send that off to the experts. <clears throat> um, I know this was a pretty long winded uh, video and video series. And um, you might be asking, well, why did you do all that? <laughs> If you're not trying to make instructional videos, you know, I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel. So some of the old dudes might say I'm being an asshole for even putting information and content like this out there. So if you feel that way, I'm sorry. But uh, anyway, it, hopefully this is somewhat helpful. And uh, I don't know, I just make videos. So it's kind of a little bit therapeutic for me. And I'm glad to share some of the information that I discovered along the way. And so, anyways, we're gonna wrap this video up. And um, man, it's been a long, it's been a long journey. Hopefully, I can get this thing back underneath that truck here on the next day out here. Um, so, if you're new to the channel, appreciate you, appreciate your interest. And if you wanna 
leave me a comment or anything like that, that would be also appreciated. And if you feel like subscribing, maybe check out some of the other videos on the channel, see if this is the type of content you're interested in. And uh, thanks for your support, and we'll see you on the next one.